Good evening. Thanks to the organizers for giving me an opportunity to present this topic in this conference. Neuroprotection, as we know, aims at maintaining career protective balance, stability, avoiding race intrapid pressures, uh, avoiding hypoxia and hypocardia, hypothermia and hypoglycemia. The many studies which are being done with various uh, uh, new pharma pharmacological drugs, but clinical studies and the efficacy uh, in humans are yet to be established. I shall try to enumerate a few pharmacological molecules that are being studied and are under evaluation in animals. And some of them have been extrapolated to the human parts. Perioperative cerebral injury can result in a wide range of clinical consequences from subtle cognitive changes to devastating or fatal strokes. Although the overall incidence of perioperative stroke is low, the large and growing number of aging patients undergoing surgery and anesthesia is placing an increasing number of vulnerable patients at risk. The natural cause of acute brain damage is often complicated by additional adverse events like development of intravenous hypertension brain hypoxia and uh, hypocognition. All these events may lead to additional brain damage and worsen the outcome. An approach designed for early identification and prompt correction of insults may therefore limit brain damage and improve results. Ischemic neural injury is characterized by early death mediated by exota ex excitotoxicity and by delayed death caused by apoptosis. Evidence indicates that volatile agents, barbiturates, and propofol can protect neurons against ischemic injury caused by excitotoxicity. In case of volatile agents and propofol, neuroprotection may be sustained if the ischemic insult is relatively mild. However, with moderate to severe insults, this neuronal protection is not sustained after a long, prolonged recovery period. This suggests that volatile agents and propofol do not reduce delayed neuron death caused by apoptosis. The long term effects of barbiturates and ischemic cerebral injury are not indefined. Cerebral ischemia is characterized by continued, continued neuronal loss for a long time after initial ischemic insult. Therefore, in investigations of, cere in investigations of cerebral ischemia, the duration of the recovery period should be taken into consideration in the analysis of neuroprotective effects of, effects of anesthetic agents. A combination of different approaches that target the, target the specific stages of the evolution of ischemic injury may be required for a sustained neuroprotection. The ability of pharmacological agents to limit secondary bio biochemical damage and cell death has been well established in numerous animal models of stroke, head injury, and spinal cord injury. The results of such neuroprotective treatment strategies in human injury have been disappointing. Neuroprotection after traumatic brain injury is an important goal pursued strenuously over the last 30 years. The acute cerebral injury triggers a cascade of biochemical events that may worsen the integrity, function, and connectivity of the brain cells and decrease the chance of functional recovery. Both the early primary events and delayed secondary alterations contribute to the resulting neurological deficits. Considerable research has sought to elucidate secondary injury mechanisms in order to develop neuroprotective treatments. Although preclinical studies have suggested many promising pharmacological agents, more than 30 phase three prospective clinical trials have failed to, failed to show significance of the primary end, for the significance for the primary endpoint. Most of the trials targeted single factors proposed to mediate secondary injury, but the complexity and diversity of secondary injury mechanisms have led to calls to target multiple delayed injury factors, either combining agents that have complementary effects or by using multipotential drugs that modulate multiple injury mechanisms. Given the multifactorial nature of secondary injury process after trauma, it is likely that it is unlikely that targeting a single factor will result in significant improvement in the outcome after traumatic brain injury. This recognition has led to recent emphasis on multipotential treatments, several of which are several of which are now in clinical trials, and others that are showing considerable promise in preclinical studies. Now let's see what are the neuroprotective agents for traumatic brain injury that have been. Uh, investigated recently. This first is statins uh, that have been studied recently. The, they are statins, progesterone, and cyclosporine. Sorry. 
Now, statins, as we know, is a HMG coil reductase inhibitor that has additional pleiotropic properties that make the potentially attractive neuroprotective agents. At microvascular level, statins increase endothelium derived nitric oxide production, reduce vascular inflammation, and limit hemorrhagic stroke. After experimental traumatic brain injury, they reduce, they seem to reduce post traumatic hypoperfusion and reward hyperemia. Statins protect cortical neurons from NMDA induced cytotoxic death and improve neuronal survival of traumatic brain injury models. They decrease apoptosis of trauma and favorably alter the ratio of anti apoptotic to apoptotic factors. Statins also promote the growth and differentiation of new neurons, which can up reflect upregulation of neurotropic factors such as brain derived neurotropic factors and vascular endothelial growth factor. They also exert anti inflammatory effects in part by decreasing the formation of isoprenols. In traumatic brain injury models, statins have been shown to limit production of inflammatory mediators, glial cell activation, cerebral edema, while decreasing the ink, while uh, increasing blood brain barrier integrity. They also decrease interleukin 1b and uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 6, and intracellular addition molecule expression levels after traumatic brain injury. Preclinical studies demonstrate that statins target multiple secondary injury pathways and improve functional outcome of traumatic brain injury. A small prospective randomized double-blinded clinical trial in TBI has been demonstrated with rosuvastatin. Treatment showed that there's a modest improvement in traumatic brain injury associated with amnesia and disorientation time outcomes. Other phase two clinical trials to evaluate rosuvastatin and rosuvastatin the treatment of head injury are being planned. Now, the next drug what is seen is progesterone. Progesterone is a neurosteroid whose receptors are expressed in the central nervous system of both males and females. Neuroprotective effects of progesterone have been reported in experimental spinal cord injury, stroke, and traumatic brain injury. They attenuate glutamate excitotoxicity, modulates apoptotic pathways, and decreases diffuse axial injury. It reduces membrane like pitfall oxidation, possibly where progulating superoxide is increased. They reduce uh, edema after injury through mechanisms that may include inhibition of sodium ATPs, modulation of vasoprosin, and or maintaining blood brain barrier function by upregulating glycoprotein. Despite the limitations of preclinical data, two randomized double blinded placebo controlled phase two trial clinical trials have been conducted. Different doses and treatment regimens were used, but both indicated trends towards improved outcome in progesterone treated patients. Two phase three multi center trials are now under development. Posthumous Protect 3 trial, where they have used IV progesterone, which was initiated within four hours of injury and continued for 72 hours in 1,140 patients with moderate to severe traumatic brain injury. The second one is Synapse Phase 3 trial. It's a global multi center trial where they enrolled 1,200 severe traumatic brain injury patients and treatment was initiated within eight hours of injury. The study, these both studies are still under development. Now, the next drug is cyclosporine. Now, as we know, after early traumatic brain injury, there is impairment of aerobic metabolisms, which leads to actually mitochondrial failure. And mitochondrial failure leads to energy and ionic imbalances, reduced brain ATP levels, changes in mitochondrial permeability transition, leads to cytochrome C, and induction of pro apoptotic events. Immunosuppressant drug like cyclosporin A attenuates mitochondrial failure by binding to cyclophilic D and stabilizing the mitochondrial permeability transition. Treatment with cyclosporine reduced axonal damage and diffuse axonal injury models and decreased lesion size following controlled cortical impact. They also showed improved outcome, which is associated, associated with preserved mitochondrial function or structural integrity. Cyclosporine A attenuates lipid peroxidation and free radical oxidative damage to mitochondrial proteins. A prospective randomized placebo controlled double blinded clinical trial of cyclosporine A was performed at two centers for severe human traumatic brain injury. Patients with, treated with cyclosporin A showed significantly lower lactate, lactate pyruvate ratios, which may actually reflect improved metabolism. A larger phase three clinical trials are in preparation. Some of the emerging neuroprotective therapies are one is diketopiprazins, substance B antagonist, sulfonyl urea receptor 1 regulated, calcium uh, regulated ATP channel inhibitors, and cell cycle inhibitors. Now, what about diketopiprazins. They are cyclized uh, dipeptides that were developed through a rational drug design program based on tripeptide thyrotropin-releasing hormone. 
But thyroidopin releasing hormone in the, its analogs inhibit multiple secondary injury factors and processes. They're highly neuroprotective and experimented neurotrauma across many labs. And there's a small clinical, clinical randomized study of TRH in humans and a small clinical randomized study of thyroidopin releasing hormone in uh, human, uh, human uh, spinal cord injury was promising. Both structurally different types. One of these, which is 35B, provided neuroprotection in multiple models of necrotic and apoptotic cell death in neural cell cultures. Now, substance free, substance free antagonist is the next one. It is released, uh, substance free is actually released early following trauma as a part of neurogenic inflammatory response. Inhibition of post traumatic substance free activity either by preventing of substance P release or by antagonism of neurokinin 1 receptor, reduce inflammation associated with traumatic brain injury and maintain the integrity of blood-brain barrier. Now, administration of substance P antagonists decrease blood-brain barrier permeability and edema formation. <coughs> Sorry. Reduce axonal injury, enhance neuronal survival and improve behavioral outcomes following ex experimental traumatic brain injury. These promising preclinical data warrant further investigations in additional animal models and species, along with the evaluation of therapeutic window. Now, there are some cell cycle inhibitors which are used for uh, preventing neuronal death cell death. One is flavopyridol, which is a semi-synthetic flavonoid, and purine analogs like oscovitin and olmosin exert powerful neuroprotective effects in various models of neuronal cell death. There are other promising targets of pharmacological intervention. Those are caspase inhibitors, pancaspase peptide inhibitor, Inhibitors of poly ADP ribose polymerase, menocycline, and cytokines, cytokines, example is interleukin 10 or interleukin 1 receptor antagonists. These again reduce the size of the infarcts and also prevent cell uh, neuronal apoptosis. So, this is an article which has come up in, uh, in uh, International Journal of Development Neurosciences in 2008, February, which shows there's a recent trend in erythropoietin mediated neuroprotection. 15 years of what they have post 15 years of uh, evidence have established that cytokine erythropoietin offers promise as a treatment for brain injury. In particular, neonatal brain injury may be reduced or prevented by early treatment with recombinant erythropoietin. When high doses of erythropoietin are administered, administered systemic, systemically, a small portion crosses a blood brain barrier and protect against hypoxic ischemic brain injury. The area in which argon has, I'm sorry. Uh, this is about uh, the inert gas organ. This came as an editorial in Angels of Cardiac Analysis in 2019, which the heading is Argon, the Future Organ Protected. The area in which the organ has received maximal attention is in its role as a neuroprotectant. In vivo studies looked at models of middle cerebral artery occlusion, traumatic brain injury, and oxygen glucose deployed environment. The studies have shown that the gas has not only a concentration dependent effect in the brain protection, but also has these protective effects, and all, but also that these protective effects were efficient when given up to 72 hours after brain injury. The in vivo studies not only confirm that argon, helium, and xenon improve survival, brain structure integrity, and neuronal recovery, but also showed that these gases could reduce infarct size. Ventilation with argon with tissue plasminogen activator, which is used for ischemic stroke, has shown a dose dependent beneficial effect. At concentrations below 50%, argon inhibits, and at higher concentrations, augments the thrombolytic effect of tissue plasminogen activity. A number of molecules thus has a, a number of molecules against the deleterious cascade of biochemical events have been tested in experimental settings, often with preliminary encouraging results. Unfortunately, clinical trials using those candidate neuroprotecting molecules have consistently produced disappointing results, highlighting the necessity of improving the research standards. The paradox of neuroprotection traumatic brain injury is that despite a long list of potential neuroprotective agents, uh, despite long list of potential, uh, potential neuroprotective agents active under uh, experimental conditions, no compound has demonstrated protection in clinical trials. While awaiting an effective molecule limiting secondary brain injury after trauma, good quality neurointensive care can provide modest but effective neuroprotection. Thank you. I hope that has covered a little bit of trends in neuroprotection. There's a more uh, vast review, which is there in some of the articles, but it's too short. Uh, it's a 10 to 15 minutes. It's too short to actually include all those in this talk. Thank you for your patience.